All right, let's go. Let's, we're going to be here. And by the way, this is free. We're not charging you. Yeah. Let's get some numbers. All right, let's get into it. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders has been declared the next governor of Arkansas. Obviously, we still have some numbers trickling in. Uh, we have Sarah Horbakowitz, who has been following uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders' campaign. <laughs> Sarah, what can you tell us uh, about what's going on right now? Faith, I heard Craig laughing a little bit there. It seems the watch party is over almost as fast as the campaign was called. The election was called just within minutes of polls closing tonight that Sarah Huckabee Sanders would be the next governor of Arkansas, a record-breaking event where she will be the first woman that will be governor of Arkansas as well. Again, you can hear things kind of breaking down as they wrap up for the night. But to wrap everything up of her last two years on the campaign, Sarah Huckabee Sanders had to share this with supporters today. It was about all of the people across the state of Arkansas, the people who showed up at our events, the people who made calls, the people who knocked doors, and frankly, even the people who did not vote for me. This election is about taking Arkansas to the top. Two things that we will be watching as we now follow her position towards governor is going to be her focus on education as well as her focus on the economy that she has talked about through her entire campaign. But I'll send it back to you in studio for now reporting in Little Rock, Sarah Horbakowitz, THV 11 News. Back to you guys. Gee, I wonder if the Chris Jones party is still going on, Faith. I mean, I guess we can check in with Frederick Price to see <laughs> uh, what's happening there. Frederick, what can you tell us? Hey guys, good evening to you again. Yeah, not much of a watch party at this point. A lot of the crowd has dwindled, but Chris Jones did uh, make that long awaited speech. He arrived here at around 830 and was greeted with thunderous applause and really a standing ovation from a room full of supporters. But one thing that he said was that he wasn't going to accept the results of the election until all of the uh, votes were official and he even reiterated that on the stage he wants to wait until all of those votes are counted before he wants to uh, accept the results of the election but one thing that he also said was that uh, he wants to continue to fight for all Arkansans because they still matter. And another thing that he said, he made a promise early on in this campaign and that he would make a difference and believe together. So we're going to have to wait in the coming days to hear about a concession from Jones. But one final thing that he said while he was on the stage, and I quote, I'm Chris Jones and I ain't going nowhere. So that kind of sets the stage there. I'll send things back to you in the studio. We walked every last street in this state, and we're going to count every last vote in this race. Why? Because Arkansas deserves it. Man, he sounded like you meant it. That's right, yeah. Man. And I think, too, someone who probably is going to remain on the scene. It sounds like definitely from tonight that he is interested in, in remaining a, a part of the Democratic Party and in the, in the political process here in Arkansas. So uh, we'll be watching with, with interest as to what, where his career goes next. Well, Chris Jones said he's certainly not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere either because we're trying to check in on the mayoral race. That's Some right. of those Another ballots. race that has yeah. not, not been called just yet. Yeah, so Frank Scott Jr., 51% of the vote. Steve Landers, 39%. Uh, still unclear, you know, a final, a final vote count, but uh, still waiting to see as those numbers trickle in. But uh, we expected uh, Steve Landers and Frank Scott Jr. to uh, have a close race there. But we want to check in with Ian Russell, who's been following the mayoral race pretty closely. Ian, what can you tell us? Evening to you guys. Well, things are starting to quiet down here quite a bit as people start to file out for the evening course. It has been a couple hours now since the polls have closed. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. was up on stage just a second ago, and if I actually, I believe he's still back there. Yeah, still taking pictures with supporters. Of course, a lot of people here are very excited to speak with him, tell him about, you know, their lives here in Little Rock. He's very excited to talk to them as well. He is all smiles as he's up there. When he was up on stage, he talked a lot about what he wants to do for the next four years. He said, you know, I am the mayor for you, and here's what he has to say. First and foremost, to the residents of Little Rock, there was a clear choice. Do we succumb to fear or do we go backwards? 
Do we go back to a wallowing in stagnation? Do we go back to fueling a brain drain? Do we go back to turning a blind eye to neglected, historically forgotten neighborhoods? And we said no. Now, officials for the Frank Scott Jr. campaign tell me they're ready to call the race. And up on stage, Mayor Frank Scott Jr. said victory is imminent. And we have not heard anything from the Associated Press just yet. Of course, when we do hear from them, we will let you all know both on air and online at THV11.com. We're live in Little Rock tonight. Ian Russell, THV11 News. Just got the word that Steve Landers may be coming to his podium here any second now. I'm glad you're still watching here. And we got to tell you up front that this is not a settled issue, Lance. Mm -hmm. This is still going on. There's still some vote out on this, and, uh, and votes from Pulaski County have been slow all night for, for various reasons that we're going to be exploring, I think, going forward as, as to what's kind of happened with, with the vote count. Uh, but, yeah, there's still Thanks. some there's still some vote uh, to come out, and, and, and now we've got Steve Landers who, who will be speaking. See what he has to say now. I was waiting on my wife. Okay. First, I want to thank you for coming tonight. First, I want to thank my wife for being with me tonight. That's what I want to do first. And I want to thank my family for all coming in. Uh, I'm grateful to the voters in Little Rock for the votes we got. Uh, we came up a little short. Congratulations to Mayor Scott, pledged to help make Little Rock more successful. Thousands voted for change, and we hope the mayor heard these thousands that voted. Now we can go back, I'm gonna go back into retirement. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm gonna enjoy a life that's filled with God's grace. I wanna thank y'all for all coming tonight. I wanna thank for you all support, for all the workers, for all the volunteers, for all the people that helped support this campaign. You know, it was just, uh, we just came up short. You know, we worked hard. You can't work any harder than I worked it. I worked it 14 months. <laughs> But there's always a winner and there's always a loser. Tonight I was a loser. So I want to thank the city employees. I wish you guys the best because I y'all were counting on me and I feel like I let you down. And I feel like I, I want you to know that hey, it's gonna be the sun's gonna come up tomorrow and it's gonna be a new day. But I want our I want the people to understand what's going on in our city. And that's what I, if nothing else, we've got that accomplished by letting a lot of people know what actually is happening in our city. Thank y'all and have a good night. As you saw there, Steve Landers has conceded. He said that he was going to go back into retirement, and he did congratulate Frank Scott Jr. for his win as the re-elected mayor of Little Rock. And now he's walking and talking to people, and um, they are uh, just uh, talking. <laughs> anyway, I'll turn it back to the studio. All right, Ashley. Well, that was a concession speech. Yeah. We were saying there was a lot of vote, more vote. There were more votes to be counted. Mm -hmm. But Steve Landers had seen enough, obviously, with his wife, Sandy, yes. who he married one year out of high school. He graduated Ooh, high oh, school and married her very next year. So they've been married a long time. Wow. And this has probably been one of the most unusual moments in their lives that they've been through because he's been a businessman car dealer yes. all of his life. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine, you know, the conceding has to be one of the toughest things to do, especially after a hard fought campaign. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what Ian Russell has to say. Ian, uh, what can you tell us about uh, Frank Scott Jr.? Yeah, well, it's still kind of quiet in here. I don't think uh, the, the room is fully realized yet that Steve Landers has conceded this race. But, of course, that does mean that Mayor Frank Scott Jr. will stay the mayor of Little Rock for the next four years. If we look back behind me, he was on the phone just a second ago. I don't know who exactly was speaking to him, but definitely some people around there who uh, look a little excited right now. I see some smiles on some people's faces. Of course, like I said, 
Steve Landers has conceded this race, meaning that Mayor Frank Scott Jr. will be the mayor for the next four years here in the capital city. And people here all throughout tonight were excited. They were telling me, you know, they were excited. They wanted the next four years. They saw the growth and they saw the vision that Mayor Frank Scott had to lead them into the future. And he mentioned that this morning when I spoke to him as he was at a polling location. He said, I've got a vision for the future. I've got a couple things that I want to do if I'm reelected. Of course, now he is reelected. And starting tomorrow, we'll get started on that path, guys. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Well, it looks like I saw a smile back there behind Ian, uh, behind his shoulder. So hopefully, you know, someone alerted him that he, you know, has won mm -hmm. and that uh, Landers has conceded. But uh, we will uh, stay updated on that. But now let's take a look at the issues that we've been following as well. Issue one through four. Obviously, we know uh, issue four has been a hot button issue to legalize recreational marijuana. It stands 56% no, 43% yes. So it looks like issue four might not be happening right now. So we will keep an eye on that. Let's get out to Jalissa Garza. Uh, Jalissa, what can you tell us about issue four? Well, Faith, Responsible Growth Arkansas was behind issue four. And as you can see, a lot of their supporters have completely left the building. They've taken down their banners, still looking closely at the polls. Now, they're holding on to a little bit of hope that they have left. And they're also, something interesting is they're taking a look at the other four states who have legalizing recreational marijuana on their ballots as well. Now, as for going forward, if this issue doesn't pass, when I spoke with Alex Gray earlier tonight, he said they'll go back and look at that amendment, see what people didn't like and possibly try and push for it to make another ballot. Now, when we look at the people who supported this issue and were against this issue, a lot of people who were against it actually supported medical marijuana passing in 2016. And they say the reason they couldn't get behind issue four was because of some of the wording in the amendment. And we really saw that division come to light today at the polls. And again, they're still holding on to a little bit of hope. But if this issue were to pass, Arkansas would join 19 other states across the country and it looks like those four other states based on their celebrating earlier looks like some of those may be passing recreational marijuana but as for the natural state it looks like it's a no-go obviously those on the opposing side of issue four happy I've reached out to a few of them still waiting to hear back but we know that both sides made that final push before the polls yesterday and today we're seeing what our Kansans have decided and in the end both sides said it was up to our Kansans to decide at the polls but for now now we're live in downtown Little Rock. Jules Garza, THV 11 News. Back to you. All right. Where there's one issue, there are three more issues we've got to <laughs> take a look at. Let's take a look Certainly at issue are. one. And this is the revises the rules for calling special session legislative sessions. Issue one. Got to know there too, Lance. That's right. Yeah, that would have allowed the legislature uh, to call itself into special session, which is different now. The, only the governor now can call you into special session. That would have changed things, and Arkansans clearly weren't ready for that. Issue two, revising the rules for ballot initiatives and constitutional amendments. Got to know there too, Lance. I think Arkansans looked at that and thought, you know, this is kind of taking away a little bit of power from me. Instead of a majority, a simple majority being able to, to pass ballot or uh, pass amendments to the Constitution, it was going to require, you know, a 60% vote. And it's hard to persuade someone to give up their power. Mm -hmm. Well, issue three adds religious freedom amendment to the state constitution. Look at this one, Lance. This is the tightest one we've the had. The tightest one of the night. And, you know, I think, you know, Arkansans, I think, you know, we, we are uh, a religious people, uh, I think, uh, here in the South. And, um, you know, that, 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 either, that either makes, when you see religious freedom, that phrase in a, in a ballot title, that either makes you feel pretty good or, or maybe you feel a little queasy about it because uh, religion is such a personal issue. And, and uh, there's a lot of different ways people could have interpreted that. And, um, and it's, it's still pretty close, though, and we, we can see how it shakes out. But uh, closest one of the night, but clearly the trend is toward no so far. Mm -hmm. A lot of issues uh, that we've been following all night. Let's head over to Roly and Charles for an update and get your perspective on things. Thank you, guys. And uh, it's, we have been talking about the dynamics of uh, minority and, and the, the Democratic Party trying to find a foothold to maybe get some momentum going again. You see some glimmers in some of the results that we've seen tonight. I do. I think that once you boil down into it, those races where Democrats were 40 percent and higher are opportunities, still a large gap, still a lot of work to do, but those are glimmers of hope. 
I think in that issues race that Arkansas and Arkansans have basically been true to the original Constitution. And those things that seem to impact the Constitution in any way, they've traditionally said, no, we, we like what we've had for all this time. I want to ask uh, Kevin, our producer, if he could go digging into the computer for House District 56, because a little bit ago, I'm going to and I'm going to yell across to Craig for his. Um, this is uh, the race between uh, Steve McGee and Trent Minner. There's and look at the difference wow. in percentage there. <laughs> Except when, it, that's yeah, that's where it is. And look at the number of votes. I have that as four votes separating yeah. the, wow. the two there. Wow. Um, that is the closest uh, race that's still outstanding uh, from what we've seen and from what our digital team has has looked into what, tonight. What's going on over in the Delta with the uh, Murdoch race? That one was a surprise. As I well. have uh, um, I have been waiting for the results to show up on the Secretary of State's website. That would be uh, Senate District uh, Reginald Murdoch, if we'll have, if they're digging it up for us right now. It has not been showing up on the Secretary of State's website. We're all scrambling on our tablets at this point to see if we can find one where it will. Of course, uh, Reginald Murdoch, uh, along a representative there in the Delta, and Absolutely. now moving on to the, or already has the position of being uh, the minority leader, in the Senate, but wow. another very, very close race. Yeah. And and give me your impressions of this, Charles, of well, uh, what position does that put Murdoch in at this point? Again, I think it's so close because of the trend we've been talking about all night. That is that the African Americans in Arkansas don't turn out. The Delta is heavily African American. I think that margin will be a lot greater uh, if the turnout We'll see that number tomorrow, but the turnout makes a difference in that. If it turns the other way, it makes a big difference. And you've watched a couple more elections than I have. And, uh, turnout is always key, it would seem, for, uh, for minority groups or coalitions that need to be built. And it, on the other hand, though, it does seem like the supporters of Frank Scott Jr., they turned out today, and I... I have a sense, and I don't know if you agree, uh, that they were energized over the, yeah. the real combative nature that seemed to have to come on the mayor. Yeah. They were energized. Frank has built a great coalition across the board, or as, I, as he liked to say, across 630. <laughs> so I think that helps him a lot as well. Um, so yeah. We are going to keep an eye on. In it's going to take counting all of those individual votes in some of those key races. There's always uh, races like that every year. So uh, there'll be some folks working, uh, burning the midnight oil tonight. But uh, the trends that we expected to see in Arkansas, for the most part, appear to have developed. Well, and the midnight oil begs for everyone. I know you've been up late, but the complete story or most of the complete story will be available tomorrow on Wake Up Central. So you've been watching Election Central tomorrow, the complete story <laughs> of on Wake Up Central, Faith. Yes, and you can always text the word vote for election results, 501-376-1111, and we'll always have the very latest for you. All right, real quick, your takeaway from tonight, Lance. Well, um, you know, voters for issue four defeated a $12 million industry effort to get recreational marijuana passed mm -hmm. in Arkansas. That's that's. That's, a, that's impressive. Uh, we elected our first woman governor. That's also something that's notable about tonight. Uh, the GOP remains in complete control of constitutional offices, uh, congressional offices as well, and the Senate, of course. And, um, and that's, that's what we're looking at uh, this evening. My big takeaway is that Faith Woodard enjoyed her first Arkansas election, I and did. you did very well. And a thanks <laughs> to Charles King and to Rolly Hoyt and to all of you for watching. Let's go to Tom. No, Tom, we're going home. Oh, <laughs> how late That's is it? A, it's late, guys. It's late. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us Where's back Tom? for Wake Up Central. Bring Tom and on. And for more election coverage. Good night. <laughs>